So talking about Mylan, it's a pharmaceutical company, um, uh, was from a chapter called Ethical Fading. And uh, ethical fading takes place when there's an excessive amount of finite-mindedness in an organization. Um, so Mylan makes the EpiPen, which has like 99% market share. Um, it's not the only product, but it's basically the only product. Um, and um, uh, they decided to hit their very, very, very aggressive financial goals, um, which if they hit them, the, uh, a small group of people, I think, was, I think it was about a dozen people in the company, um, would get very rich, um, uh, uh, incentivized by the, by the board. And so uh, what ended up happening was they started doing things that, though not illegal, are highly unethical. They started raising the price of what is basically an essential drug for so many people. Um, and we see this in, unfortunately, we see this across uh, pharmaceuticals uh, frequently when they own a patent. You know, they raise the price of the drug 500%, 800%, 1,000%, 2,000%, 5,000%. Again, not illegal, but really uncomfortable, right? Um, and it was all driven by, by their own short-term desires to hit a short-term number so that they personally may benefit, completely ignoring the fact that it would literally, it could kill people if they couldn't afford to get a new batch of EpiPen because you need a new one every year because they do expire, um, that literally someone could die. And that's mind-blowing to me. And that's finite-mindedness. That's one of the negative impacts when uh, finite-mindedness takes hold inside an organization because we become so insular and think about our own success and our own benefits uh, and literally become ignorant to the world around us. And when people accuse us, we say things like, well, you know, uh, we didn't do anything illegal. We justify it. Everyone's doing it. It's the system. Don't blame us. You know, uh, and there's a, a lot less accountability. Um, uh, Patagonia, as you said, is the total opposite. Patagonia is a very infinite minded organization and is, a, and is obsessive about the outside, is obsessive about their contribution to their customer and, more important, the environment. Um, and they hold themselves to a higher standard than probably almost any other company on the planet for the sourcing of their companies to the point where they ran... Uh, serious advertising asking people not to buy their product unless they absolutely needed it. Now, a lot of people were cynical and thought it was a stunt, but they genuinely meant it, which is we have this expensive product. Please only buy it if you absolutely need it because we don't want, you, we don't want to create too many to waste. And they set up entire programs where if you decided that you were done with your, your jacket, they had a whole uh, aftermarket so you could sell it secondhand through them. Or they would take it back from you and recycle it to make more. Uh, the point is they had a whole s supply chain just to deal with people who were done with their, 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 their clothing. And even their sourcing was more aggressive than, than almost every other company. And they knew it came at personal expense. They knew it affected the numbers and increased the costs. They knew that. But to them, it was worth it. And the love and loyalty that their people have for their products, the love and loyalty that their customers have for their products are all because, goes back to that just cause, by wearing a Patagonia jacket, it's not that I just like the jacket, it's telling you something about who I am and what I believe and I'm willing to put, uh, make the sacrifice, maybe pay the premium for the premium product because it's important to me. And that's really where, where great loyalty lies.